Hello, and welcome to XEMS Institute. I'm Paul Benton, and I'm going to be taking you through parameter selection and how to edit your parameters. All right, so let's take a look. Here I've already loaded up some different data, and I've actually loaded up the fatty acid hydroxyl knockout data set. Um, and so we're going to just select the very best uh, starting parameter settings for that. So this was run on HPLC, and it was actually run on a single quad, so that's the parameter setting that I'll select. Now if you want to view or edit these, we have this little but button that you can click here, and this will allow you to be able to go through all the different tabs and see what all the different settings are. If you want to create a new um, parameter settings, you can click on New, rename it to what you want, probably something a little bit better than Test, and then go through all of your different uh, parameter settings. Now, I'm just going to touch on quickly here uh, two of the uh, very big choices that you have to make right at the beginning, uh, which will greatly affect your different data sets, and that is peak detection. XEMS Online has two different algorithms for peak detection. One is match filter. This is the original algorithm which was published with XEMS and CentWave, which was an uh, updated high-resolution uh, peak detection algorithm. Now, match filter works on profile data. Um, so if you have profile data which is high-resolution, you need to be using match filter. Now, match filter has uh, two main uh, d parameter settings that you'll need to set. And the first one is the full width half maximum. So this is how wide your peaks are in retention times on average. So for an HPLC data set, it's normally somewhere around 30 seconds. For UPLC data sets, you probably want to set this a lot smaller, probably somewhere around maybe 10 or 15 seconds. The other setting that you need to think about is your step size. Now in low resolution data, uh, 0 0.1 is quite good. And what 0 0.1 corresponds to is uh, 0 0.1 m over z, uh, or your mass to charge ratio bins. So we're going to bin up the data into 0 0.1 units. Now for higher resolution data, you probably want to set this value a little bit smaller. The problem here is that as you set this value smaller, you're going to be taking longer because you uh, essentially have more steps to go through. Um, so if you have high resolution data, it's, I, I highly, highly recommend uh, trying to get that data into some sort of uh, centroid um, data set before you, you upload it. Now, in CentWave, you have uh, three main options that you need to think about, um, or two in, in some ways, depending on how you look at it. One is this uh, PPM value, and this is how accurate your instrument is not uh, with an internal standard, but from scan to scan variation. So does your um, mass spectrometer have a very high scan to scan variation? If it does, so if it's low resolution data, that's very likely. And you can see that by 30. Actually, we could probably set that value a little bit higher. Um, the other thing that you want to be thinking about is how wide your peaks are again in CentWave. And CentWave has a minimum and a maximum to this, and they're not hard and fast limits. Uh, it will stray out a little bit, but it helps the algorithm to understand what your data looks like. And so here we've just, this would be equivalent of uh, 10 seconds on the smaller side and 60 seconds on the larger side. Now if you're running HPLC, maybe you want to set your maximum uh, up a little bit more. Um, if you're running UPLC, you probably want to set both of these values much smaller maybe somewhere for your minimum around 2 or 5 in my experience, and your maximum probably somewhere around maybe 20 to 25 seconds, again, depending upon how your experiment actually looks. So it's always a good idea just to have a look at your data on your instrument and just have a rough idea of what uh, your peak widths are. The other thing that I want to just uh, touch on here quickly is this pre-filter idea in CentWave. And just because this is used quite a lot. And it depends upon your instrument, uh, how long your uh, scan rate or duty cycles are. And so essentially what the pre-filter is saying is that we need a minimum of 100 counts for each one of your um, uh, scans. And uh, you need 
that peak to be up above 100 scans for uh, 100 counts for a minimum of three scans. If it's not, it won't be counted as a peak. Now again, you can make this longer uh, depending upon your scan rates, and you can make uh, your um, intensity higher or lower depending upon uh, what your experiment is like. Uh, this is quite a good way to cut out any noise that you might be seeing. If you're seeing a lot of noise in your data sets, uh, simply set this value just a little bit higher. There is the regular signal to noise ratio that you can set as well, uh, but this does, in my experience, a very nice job of that. So I'll be going through all of the other parameters and algorithms in XMS in other future videos. But for the moment, thank you very much.